everything within your power to hold on to it. Yes, you are. Not so with God. The word of God says, and I'm going to read it again into your hearing. He did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. That's selflessness. That's humility. But watch that. Well, watch this. He just here's the here here is where it really hits you. But stripped himself. But stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity, so as to assume the guise of a servant slave, and that he became like men and was born a human being. Understand this, y'all. You know what that's akin to? Think of it like this. Let's go. Let's go to a place. Uh, let's go to a monarchy. Amen. In the days of monarchies. And let's go to the days of King Arthur and the round table. Camelot. Amen. I'm going to say that because it's, I'm the one that's giving the illustration here. And then I'm the one that's giving the message. So I'm as the Holy Ghost leads me. All right. You can come up with something that fits you. But this fits me. King Arthur and the round table. King Arthur was the king, and he had knife of the round table. Uh huh. Imagine King Arthur stepping down from being king just so he could come become a regular knight at his own round table. Kings are not willing to just abdicate or give up their throne. What what has to happen for you to take the throne of a king? You have to overthrow them. But the word of God said, but stripped himself. Of all privileges and rightful dignity. And guess what? Who asked him to do that? That's humility, y'all. So as to assume the guise of a servant slave and that he became like men and was born a human being. Now understand this. Why would he do something like that? Let's go back to John 15. And let's pick up verse 13. Thank you, Holy Ghost. No one has greater love no one has shown stronger affection than to lay down and give up his own life for his friends. Understand this. Uh, uh, this, this particular verse is also refine, referring to uh, what Jesus Christ did at Calvary's cross on our behalf. Uh, no one has greater love. No one has shown stronger affection than to lay down and give up his life, his own life for his friends. John 3.16. Amen. God so loved the world. Uh, he, gave his own, he gave his only begotten son. Romans 5, 8, God committed his great love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. But not, but, but what, what God is trying to get us to understand, you can't do me, but there's something that you can do that would be representative of me. And what is he saying? He says, well, listen, when you see someone who has a need, what I need you to do is the example that I did for you. Strip yourself. Relinquish who you are. Which, which simply means stop being selfish. Let go of your own selfish desires. And then when you see that person in need, don't wait for somebody to come and say, I got a need. Can you help me? No. You see that need, so you strip yourself. And then what you do is whatever it is that has been given to you, the wherewithal, the ability to meet and uh, to uh, uh, aid somebody in their need, then you take on and perform a selfless act. In that regard, that's what God is asking of us. That's what Jesus did here in verse 7. He stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity so as to assume the guise of a servant slave and that he became like men and was born a human being. He didn't have to do that. It's his love that, that, that allowed him to do that. And it's God's love that makes us do right. Because that was the right thing to do. And the reason why he was able to do it, because he was righteous. We couldn't do it. We can't do it on our own outside of Christ because we have no righteousness of our own. Oh, yes, old minister, well, we got self-righteousness, but all your righteousness has filthy rags. Amen. Why? Because you're full of sin. There ain't no right thing in you. There's no good thing within us. The Bible says there's no good thing that dwells within the flesh of man. So how can we be righteous? Righteous in whose eyes? Not God's. The one that matters. Oh yeah. 
when you and I look at each other, we absolutely can see right within ourselves. Why? Because we're looking at ourselves to what the Lord has given me to be able to say to you and to me. We look at ourselves. I got glasses on, corrective lenses that help me to be able to see what I need to see. And I also have photo gray. A photosensitive uh, 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 eye lenses in here that changes with the lighting. Well, what we have when we look at one another, and we will know when we look at our own self, not when we look at one another, but when we look at one another, we tend to look at each other with clear glasses and we can see everything about the other person. But when we look at our own selves, we put on rose colored glasses and all we see is good in us. <laughs> the eyes of Christ. The light of the world. He reflects back to us. What we really are. And so when we look to Jesus. And allow the light from him. To shine back on us. It reveals to us. What we are. Why? Because that which is made. what That which is hidden in the dark. Will be made manifest. And brought to light. Lord have mercy. We, we, well, we own it right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He expects us to uh, become selfless, y'all, as opposed to being selfish. And it's why? Because he set the example. Let him be your example in humility. I'm almost done with that. With this particular set of scriptures. Let's go to verse 8. Now, 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 you would think that that would be enough. And he became like men and was born a human being. Why did he become like men and become a human being? Because you know what? We need to understand what God was talking about in the scriptures prior to Christ's coming. Amen. We need to understand when God was talking, but when the word of God was uh, saying here, as it said uh, 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 in, in, in verse uh, 12, this is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. We need to have more than just that word explaining that to us. You absolutely need to see the example that went with the word. Why? Because God knows that we are the type of creatures that have to have tangible reasoning to do what we do we have what i call the apostle thomas syndrome amen i don't call him doubting thomas because i think that's a misnomer placed upon him because of what he did what he did when you go through the scriptures and allow the holy ghost to illuminate that to you he did the right thing all he was saying was that for me to believe in jesus christ i need to know it for myself Amen. Because again, we're talking about the resurrected life of Jesus Christ. And if you believe in him, if you want to believe in Jesus Christ, you cannot have a relationship with Jesus Christ based upon somebody else's relationship. Can't do it. You cannot be saved by your mother or your father's relationship with God, your husband's or your wife's relationship with God, your brother or your sister's relationship with God, your pastor's relationship with God cannot save you. It's personal, y'all. And you need to know him for yourself intimately. So the Apostle Thomas said, that's what I need to do. I need to be able to feel him. I need to be able to see him. So that I know that I know for myself. Amen. But, but, but the Apostle Thomas syndrome is, again, uh, uh, we got to have proof. We got to have tangible proof. So God says, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to reveal myself to you so you will know me better. So you get to know me better. And I know you, but you need to know me better. You need to know what my characteristics are. You need to know what my attributes are. You need to know what makes me, me, and why I do what I do. It may, it may not make sense to you because my thoughts and my ways are not yours, and your thoughts and your ways, they don't match up with mine. Amen. But that's all right. You will understand it better by and by. And what helps you to understand it better in by and by? Second, uh, uh, Second Timothy 2.15, study to show yourselves approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. That's how you get to know him better by and by. And then seek him out in prayer, y'all. Go to God and have a communication. Have a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. Amen. In prayer. And then you will know him better. Fast. Take time out to get real close to God. Why? He rewards those who diligently seek after him. Lord have mercy. God's love will make us do right. Oh, yeah, we need a, oh, yeah, he will make us do right. So, yeah, yeah. So, he was showing to us that, that he had to come down here to become like us. 
so that we he so it could be easy for us to to deal with him for it's easy us to for us to receive him but even in that he came unto his own and his own received him not and the holy ghost did something for me on that some time ago y'all when i was always thinking about that scripture that said that i thought that it was referring to the hebrew people because he came down through 40 and 2 generations through the lineage of king david and that was the jewish people amen and i thought that that was scripture was relating to them until I, the Holy Ghost pointed me back to John 3, 16, where the word of God said, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. He came, but the Jews didn't only not receive him. The world didn't receive him. Amen. And, why, and, and they were God's own people. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of his pasture. Amen. We are the creation of God. He said in Genesis 1.26, let us create man in our image. In the image of God did he create man. So, therefore, he wanted us to get acquainted with him. But watch what he did in verse 8. And after he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself still further. Let's pause parenthetically right there. Verse 7. He stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity. He took off his godness and took on humanity and became a servant and, and, and a slave and like men. He became like men and was born a human being. That's a, that's a lot right there, y'all. But the Bible says, and after he appeared in human form, after he became a human, y'all, not when he was God, but after he became a human, he abased and humbled himself still further. Now, 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 understand this. When we're in the Word, when we're talking about the relationship with God, one of the things that people tend to say is that, you know, I have a problem with Christianity. And the reason why I got a problem with Christianity is that I don't believe it takes all that to be a Christian. Why does it have to take all of that? You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. You got to do that. Well, I'm here to tell to you. I'm here to submit to you that not only does it take all of that that God says, it really takes much more than that. But it's because of his grace and mercy, he will accept that what he has defined for you and I. But understand this, that even, even Jesus Christ showed this to us, y'all. He showed to us what he did as God to strip himself of his godness. But when he came in human form, where he was a human, he showed that, you know what, even in that state, I still can uh, 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 show forth humility. Because there is power to be able to do that. And all we have to do is allow the love of God to permeate within us. And God's love will make you do, make us do right. It will make us do right. Why? Because when God came down, Jesus came down, sacrificed his life for us. He died. And then God the Father in his role with his mighty power raised him up from the dead. And then when he ascended into heaven, he bestowed all power into his, into his right hand, where he sits on the side of the right hand of the Father, uh, 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 making intercession on your, your and my behalf. Um, when God did that, Jesus told his disciples when he was preparing to leave, because he knew how distressed that they were about him leaving. And he says, well, I'll tell you what, don't worry about him. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you the comforter, the helper, the Holy Ghost. And when I send you the Holy Ghost, he's going to do it. He's going to tell you all things that I tell him. And then if you allow him to and you become under his control, he's going to lead and guide you into all paths of righteousness. So what am I saying? That when you allow God and we do know that God, the Bible lets us know that God is love. Amen. So if God is love, we're already talking about there's a triune the trinity of a God, the Godhead, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost. And so if God, the Holy Ghost has come down and descended down from heaven and goes into the believer uh, who, who accepts and receives Jesus Christ 
Jesus their personal Savior, guess what happens? God the Father sent God the Son, and God the Son sent the Holy Ghost. Guess what else came with the Holy Ghost? God's love. Why? Because they're one. They're equal. So if you allow the love of God within you to permeate and, and control you, guess what it will do? It will absolutely allow us to be able to humble ourselves and to do it even more than what we think that we can do. Why? He can do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond that what we can even imagine or even ask. What we can imagine or even think. What we can ask or even think. According to the riches and glory that exists within Christ Jesus, he can, get, he can do all things. He provides all that for us, but he can do exceedingly and abundantly above y'all. The Holy Ghost has no limitations on it. Why? There's no limitations on God. He has all power in his hand. The Bible says he's the beginning. He's the end.